God is awesome. All the time. All the time. God is awesome. Right, so get your Bibles out. Turn to Psalm 150. I challenge you today to give it all you got in this service. If you have a cell phone, unless you're using it for the Bible, put it up. Please, put it up. Do not be playing games. Do not be texting, playing Facebook and all that. Put it up. We're, it's too serious of a time. We're sitting on the edge of God coming back. We're sitting on the edge of war. We're sitting on the edge of our rights being taken away from us. And it's to be sad to be sitting in church every week and not hear the pastor because we're playing games on the phone. Or we're, or we're uh, Facebooking and, and all that. Put it up. Please, put it up. It's my challenge. Put it up. You all expect to say, put it up. Amen. The sex sounded kind of harsh. Well, I've asked you nicely. I'm going to say it a little harsher. Put it up. Put it up. I was on the plane coming back from San Juan. We had three seats, and we had the little bitty seats. And so I said, Lord, let it be a little bitty person who wants to sleep the whole time. Then I held hands in agreement. Let it be a little bitty person who wants to sleep all the time. Because that's how it was on the way there. And just before... The plane started filling up because the plane started walking down the aisle. And I said, Lord, if you're not going to send a little bitty person that is going to sleep all the time, send the preacher. And sure enough, a guy come in, he sat down, and I, I, I looked at him and he said, I said, let me get away before I, before I knock you down or, or abuse you. He said, I'm used to it. I said, me tell my pastor. He said, they have funny, I am too. And he sits down. And he says, I want to show you something. I said, what? He started showing me. He was in Pennsylvania. He'd been in San Juan doing some rebuild for the Baptist. And so, he said, I've been here a week. And I'm going home. He said, I look at what I said. I bet y'all had fun building this Puerto Rico. He said, I've been building in Puerto Rico and in my church. I said, well, show me. <clears throat> and so he showed me this wonderful church he built. And he said, the church is wonderful. It's, it's beautiful. It's magnificent. I was amazed. It was so, I mean, it's, the, the, the workmanship was awesome. He said, but it's sad. He said, because it's empty. I said, well, just work at it, man. The Lord will pick it back up. He said, after I finish this church, I've decided to quit pastoring. I said, no, come on now. Quit talking like that. He said, well, he said, I'm just going to go into the chaplain work at the hospital. He said, at least there I've got to Captive audience. I said, you're kidding. He says, no. He says, people in this day and time, we even talked about a little bit. Y'all didn't know this. Y'all guys that know some y'all were talking this around up here a while ago, but I was going to talk about this too today. Is he said, I find it hard to reach people these days because they're so busy doing their thing. And they want to be entertained. And they don't really want God if it's going to require anything of them. And he said, I can't reach them. He said, I'm tired of trying. It says, so I was in Puerto Rico, me and God had a talk, and I told God that when I go back, when I finish building that church, I quit. I sat there and almost cried. Because I see the same thing everywhere. It's important. That we give it all we've got. If you can't give it all you've got, give it as much as you can. Because God's coming back. He said when you come back, there's going to be a great falling away. That's here. The word falling away does not mean you're just not here. It means even when you are here, you're not here. <clears throat> it's important. Very important. In Puerto Rico, I was talking with a lady. We were talking about God. And she says, oh, I love God. He, he, I love him. I talk to him all the time. But I said, well... What about Jesus? She says, I ain't got time for Jesus. I said, he's your Savior. She says, I'll be fine with just God right now because I don't have to change. That's the world. It's not just saying one. That's the world. Give it all you got, church. I'm not trying to say this in a mad way or a mean way. I'm trying to say this in a pleading way. I'm pleading. Give what you got because time is drawing short. People don't even want to hear it anymore. It's here in front of us right now. Our vice president was, was beat up on the view because he said he talked to Jesus every day and Jesus talked back to him. 
And the lady's going, you said he has to be mentally ill. Jesus is talking back to him. The lady had to make an apology to him, but she didn't do it publicly. She did it personally. And then in a roundabout way, look it up. She kind of apologized to Christians, kind of. Then the rest of them said, we're Christians too. But then he said, but does he talk to you every day? Wow. What a day we're living in. It is so important. You're getting meat. You're getting stuff that helps you get through the week. It's important that you don't sit here and not hear it. Listen to it. Apply it. Use it. Or lose it. Okay? If you don't lose it, the government's going to cause you to lose it. All right? And say, so here we go. Now I'm going to spend my little five cents worth of you. Let's talk about praise. Get your Bible out. <laughs> Isn't it good? That was supposed to be the sandwich. This is supposed to be two pieces of bread of praise on each side. We did. We had praise on one side. We got praise here. We had to beat in the middle. Amen. Isn't that cool? Psalm 150. Stand for the reading of the word. What I have noticed <clears throat> over the years is the people that are carrying the baton and reaching back and giving it to somebody else. These people are all dying out. And there's nobody to give it to. And so there's a lot of times laying on the ground. But it should be picked up and be run. It's important. In, in Pitt Detention Center, they used to have one little bitty spot, one little bitty spot for the ladies, and one little bitty spot for the juveniles. Now they have two and three spots for the juveniles because there's so many. There's three different areas for the women now because there's so many women locked up. The world is getting crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I was talking, I know I told you about, I was talking to the juveniles one night, and one of the juveniles would say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, and then he would cuss. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, and cuss. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, and cuss. He had me so mad that night, I honestly, if I could have gotten him, I'd have took a belt to him. Fifteen years old, talking to me like I was some kind of something. And then I finally just said, oh, the Bible says I'm answering a fool in his folly. And he said, well, you say I'm a fool. I said, no, but you're definitely calling out folly. I prayed and prayed hard. The next time I come in, I saw him get ready to do the same thing. And instead of him doing that, I just said, can I ask all y'all guys something? All y'all, they're all, all over under 18. I said, can I ask y'all something between 14 and 18? I said, can I ask y'all something? How long has it been since a real man, a real man, told you that he believed in you? And all of a sudden, his started going down. They quit heckling. They put their heads down. And I said, there's no question. How long has it been since a real man? Told you that he loves you. Not some wishy mushy mess. Loved you enough to come in here and step away from stuff he had in his own home with his wife and with his grandchildren to be here with you real love. As long as the business the real man told you he loved you, he has been way down. When I went back to the sales, everybody was weeping, especially that guy that hit me the time before. He cried and cried and cried and cried. We have to be ready for what's coming. And it's not coming, it's here. It's here. If we don't push back, it's going to grow. We have to keep pushing back. If we keep pushing back, it won't grow. But unless we, the least amount we push back, the more's coming. So we've got to stand up and do something. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to do more. Amen. Amen. Okay. Psalm 150. <coughs> praise you, the Lord. Y'all say, Praise you, the Lord, with me. Every time you say, Praise you, the Lord, y'all say, Praise you, the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the furnace of power. Praise Him in His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the soft and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with the string instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, that you're alive and willing on the throne, Father. We thank you, God, that you're working in our midst, God. We thank you, God, that you've got power and anointing. I thank you right now, God, that you've got something special for us this day. Help us, God, Lord, not to let it go by, not just to take it as something, something that's the norm or just to push it to the side or to close our ears or to be distracted. 
Help us keep our mind in the game because this is life or death. Somebody can live or die off of this word today. Help us, God, to understand that somebody can live or die today off of this word. Or somebody we know could live or die off the word we learned today to tell them. Lord, help us keep our mind in the game and get ready for what you've got for us. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise your name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Wait now, shake somebody's hand. No, if you're not here after while I'm here after, you'll be here after I'm gone. You know, uh, King David, I heard a little boy, I heard a little boy talking to his mom. He said, King David used to be a hero of mine, but not anymore. The little Brody told his mother after church one Sunday. Why not, son? He said, I learned today that he killed the Jolly Green Giant. <laughs> That's the <again. laughs> All right, here we go. Made the praise. Eight reasons to praise the Lord. Now we'll go through the first few. Just so we can have all eight, I'm not going to do like I did last week. I did four last week. Stay on it, dwelled on it. I'm not going to dwell on the first four. I'm just going to throw them out there, and then I'm going to go on to the next one. So y'all get ready for a ride. You got your, got your belts tightened? Amen. Here we go. Eight reasons to praise the Lord. Now, now praise itself. Praise is, is first is an expression, Hallel and Yah. Hallel and Yah, which means to boast, to celebrate, or make big the strong one, the self-existent one. It's more than just an expression. If it's just an expression, you will live a very shallow Christian life. It has to be an attitude. Conditions don't affect my praise, but my praise affects my conditions. And it's definitely contagious. I remember talking to one of the ladies that, while we were sitting around the table with the power out. We were sitting around the table talking with candles. And, and there were people from all over the world standing around. And as I was talking, uh, a lady from, from Chile was, was starting to cry. And she said, oh no, oh no. Uh, David, you're making my head swell. Not swell. You're making my head leak. You're making me cry. And the other guy said, the, the guy from France said, or oh, that's or Italy. The guy from Italy said, that's because he's a pastor. <laughs> and I said, it's not because I'm a pastor. It's because the Holy Ghost is here. Amen. The Holy Ghost is working in our midst. Amen. So here it is. Watch this. So, so number one is contagious. Number one, here it is. It's the right thing to do. That everything that have breath, praise you the Lord. Now I see this. Here it is. Everything that's all creation that has life, brag on God. Praise is bragging on God. You know what? When you brag on God, it's amazing what happens. David said seven times a day, uh, I stop and shout praises for the way you keep running things right. Isn't that cool? Seven times a day means that, that he lives a life in, in perfect praise. Seven doesn't mean that he goes, okay, it's number six, number seven, I quit, time off, punch the clock. No, it means literally his life was a life of praise. Perfect praise. Let me ask you a question. And I'm guilty of it too. How often do you praise him? Amen. Do you keep it on the edge of your tongue? He, watch this. He deserves it. He desires it. He delights in it. He dwells in it because we call to him. Number one. Number two. I told you we go fast. Number two. Get ready. Number two. Praise is where God lives. Amen. God is enthroned. Psalm 22 and 3. God is enthroned upon the praises of Israel. God is moved into a position of honor to be praised and worshiped. He comes to us. He responds. You say, I haven't been able to get a touch of God. Get touch dog or get uh, in touch with God let him try praising him. He said, well, I, still, I just can't seem to get anything, anything at all. Praise him. Well, it doesn't seem like he's really showing up. He's showing up. You may not feel it, but he's showing up. He promised if you praise him, he'll be there. Whether you feel it or not, you promise him or you praise him and he promised he'll be there. Third, praise enables access to God. In his case with thanksgiving and his course of praise, Psalm 104. We are moved into a position of humility to bring praise and worship to God. Amen? And we're moved like that. Now, He comes to us, and once we go into His gates of praise, we go to Him. Isn't that a cool thing to think about? Even though I don't necessarily feel it, I came this morning, but look, I got the 58 going on. You know, when I was, when I was 28, I didn't have a back. When I was 38, I started noticing my back. When I was 48, it was there. Now that I'm 58, it's saying, huh? <laughs> Amen. Of course, of course, being hit by that, ran in the back end by that car, it didn't help matters. But still, you know, yeah, it, the, I got this point. I said, wow, the time changed and my back did. <laughs> Get up and go. Amen. So, so, we come to him. We respond. Well, here it goes. Get, get close. 
And finally, what's this? Praise chases away despair. He says, trust me, I got this. So, so here it is. As for those who grieve over Zion, God has sent me to give them a beautiful crown in exchange for ashes. To learn with gladness instead of sorrow. To wrap them in victory, joy, and praise instead of depression and sadness. Uh, here it is. Watch this. Change your focus. If you'll change your focus, you will exchange your outlook. There's a lot of people in this world and a lot of Christians that have stinking thinking. Amen? I'm guilty of my own self. I have times where I have stinking thinking. And when I see that I have stinking thinking, you know what I do? I have to stop and sit down for a minute and say, wait a minute, why am I thinking this way? Why, why am I getting upset over this? Why am I getting angry over this? When I need to just stop and praise God and just spend some time in His presence and in His Word. Because when you do that, God will change you. He'll change your outlook. He'll change how you see things. So there, there it is. Praise is the right thing to do. Praise is where God lives. Praise enables access to God. Praise, is, praise chases away despair. Here we go, number five. I know you're waiting for number five. Ready? I love this. I, I really enjoyed uh, this message. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Psalm 98 and 4. Now I want you to think about that for just a minute. Think about it. I'm going back to it. Praise brings deliverance. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas, listen, they were put in the very bottom of the prison. There was usually two or three store or two or three sections. They were put in the very bottom. They were beat for bringing deliverance to a young lady who was possessed with the devil. Uh, they are, they're falsely accused. They actually were doing good work for God. They're put down in stocks. They're put down in green sick. And there's all this stuff around them. And they couldn't complain or whatever, but instead, the Bible says, and at midnight, at the worst possible time, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And that word heard means actually to listen with anticipation. They want to see what their God was going to do. Do you know there's people around here in this neighborhood who want to see what God's going to do with us and through us? Do you know sometimes what you go through every day, you think that this Please listen carefully. You may think the devil is, is tempting you or the devil's trying to hurt you or, or whatever. It could be God testing you. What are you going to do? Here's the opportunity. What are you going to do? You know, I, I told you one time before I get a call from a guy, uh, we had a strong, when I was pastoring in Bath, we had a very strong community. And, we, and all, the, all the pastors, we were very close friends. We, we studied together. We had services together. During Desert Storm, we had multiple services together. During Easter, we always had a, a, a major, major service with probably 500 to, to 800 people out at the point. And we would do things. We did stations of the cross. We'd walk across the out path and stop at the station and, 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 and work. So we, we had a real close relationship. One day I got a call from one of the pastors. He said, I'm sending somebody over to you. And I said, okay, we'll send them. And I thought it was kind of crazy for him to say, I'm sending somebody to you. He said, uh, I'll send them over Sunday. I said, well, send them. Go ahead. I said, but can I ask you, why do you send some people over here? He said, because they're your kind of people. And I said, excuse me, my kind of people? He says, yeah, the children are dirty. Last time they come in, they got the pews dirty. He said they run around and make that kind of crazy. Mama didn't take care of them. Mama didn't take care of herself. She come in and she looked like she had just been drugged up. I said, it's your kind of people. Our people, we don't need that kind of people here at our church. I said, well, I tell you what, brother. Every time you see one of my people, send them over this way. I said, because I'd be proud to have them come into the church. They came to the church one Sunday. The next time they came on a Saturday to talk, I got my kids you not. The kids got so wild they knocked out the screen door in the parsonage. <laughs> they ran right through it. The first time they came to church, I actually put them out in the back, and, and, and I had somebody strategically there, and I let them blow their nose. And when they blew their nose, I said, just wash their face a little bit. It was pitiful. But a pastor told me, that's your kind of people, because I know you'll take it. We don't want them. That's the way life is. That was the test. That was a test. But I, what was I going to say? What was I going to do? I said, bring them. Send them on. Keep bringing them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. So, 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 so again. So watch this now. So, so here it is. Here's the test now. And at midnight. They've done good. They did everything. They did everything right. They dotted every I. They crossed every T. They did everything right. And now they're stopped. 
They don't see growth. They don't see anything. All they see is stagnation and death. I mean, here, daughter, if you think you've crossed every T, you dotted every I, and all you see is you've been stopped, and all you see is stagnation and non-growth. Anybody in here? Watch this. Listen carefully. Here's what you could have done. Well, here's what Paul's office could have done. Number one, they could have had a little pity party. Think of that about a pity party is nobody accepts the invitation. If they do come, they don't bring gifts. Pity party. When somebody has a pity party about things that's going on in their life, there's a breakdown in their psyche. There's a breakdown because of sorrow. And they start seeing things through depression and they start seeing things through, through I'm not good enough and they're going to get me and everybody's out to get me, blah, blah, blah. So you can throw a pity party. When you're stopped, you're stopped. You were making progress. All of a sudden you stopped. Right midstream, stopped. Not only are you stopped, now you are uh, uh, held hostage by the situation, captured by the situation, is stagnant, there's no growth, all you see is death, and here you are. So watch, first, you can pity. You can have that breakdown, that sorrow, and, and turn inward. Or, I see this, this is some things I've seen, and I've done every one of them. I've done every one of these. Just so y'all can say, well, I bet he ain't never done that, I bet I have. I'm David Lynn, I'm a human being. I mean, here human beings. Okay. Number two, you can get power. When things like this start happening, you can shut down because now you're going to shut down. I, I'm guilty sometimes. I really am. All of a sudden, you begin to complain. As you begin to complain, watch this now. When, 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 I'm, when I'm pouty or when I'm having a pity party, it's inside. But now that pity party, was once I keep letting it keep rolling, 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 I get pouty. And now I start to tear down, not just myself. Now I'm starting to tear down other people because they're hearing me complain. We got to get on the plane. We were, in, we were in Georgia trying to get the plane back to North Carolina. And as we were waiting, uh, uh, we were sitting there and I saw a guy come up and he said, I heard him say, but well, you don't understand, I had first class seats. And the guy said, but well, you don't understand, your name's not up here. That's worse than fifty cents a center. He said, but I have, I have first class seats. He said, sir, I understand. I've checked the log. I've called around. He said, they did find you a seat, but they got you a seat in the regular, where, where the regular folks were. They give you a peanut and a, glass, a little cup of water while you watch them bring a steak and everything to the other guys up front. They don't even have, they got a common courtesy and put a, a, a cloth in between. You just watch them. They're waiting for they get some mess, they get some mess, they're bringing them hot food, blah, blah. blah. I'm sitting out there getting, getting a peanut and a glass of water. Okay. So he's having a, he's, he gets over up against the wall. First he, had, first he had the pity going on, then he had the pouty going on. His eyes start to complain. And he's complaining so loud and everybody's hearing him. I looked over at Linda and I said, I wish he would take that outside. <laughs> she said, why? I said, because I hear enough of this all the time. I don't need to hear this guy. They tried to tell him. They explained to him. He bought his ticket at the wrong time. It wasn't just their fault. It's his fault too. They explained. He messed up too. It wasn't just them. He messed up. But he's there complaining. He's fussing. Then he gets on the phone and talks to somebody. He makes sure he calls it out. He's complaining. So, so, so there, there's the pouting. You break down, you start to affect people around you. Then watch this. If you're not careful, you'll move to a pushy. Now, now if you move to, to where's that? There you go. If you move to pushy, now you're going to want to complain. Now you're aggressively involving other people. Before they just had to be hearing you complain, now you're aggressively causing people to hear you. This is going, this happens all the time. Think about it in your own life when you're going through situations. And so, so here it is. Here it is. He is. He's pushy. You can be pushy. This guy was pushy. This guy got so pushy that, that actually I thought he was going to grab the guy over the counter and pop him. Which would not have been a good idea because there was guys standing around with guns. You don't go to the airport and pull, pull the man over the counter. That's just not a good deal. If you think you can, you go ahead. I, well, I'll, take, I'll take pictures to show your relatives. Because they won't be seeing you for quite some time. Okay, so 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 then push it. You start start arguing now, and when you get like this, you don't just argue with what's going on. Now you argue with other people because other people are saying, "Calm down." You're going, "I don't want to calm down." Oh no, this is how this guy did. And you know what's so wild about him? I said, "Lord bless that man. Lord bless him. I'm tired of hearing it. 
it's the late morning. It was the red eye. I was already, already was already tired, and I hear him. And so uh, we get on the plane. He's, he argues all the way on the, on the plane. He sits about three seats behind me. I can still hear him arguing. Before the plane took off, the stewardess walked up to him and said, "Sir, we had a cancellation in first class." We're sorry for all this inconvenience. Come on up here and get your bag. We'll bring you up to first class where you thought you were supposed to be to begin with. I said, praise God. <laughs> and then he said, no, you don't mess me up enough. I'll just stay right here. Okay, that showed him, didn't it? <laughs> if Linda hadn't been with us, I'll take it. <laughs> they tried to help the man. He didn't want help. He just wanted to complain. They got him a seat in the first class. He wouldn't take it. It blew me away. Then they actually did something to help him, and all he wanted to do was to keep on fussing. Oh, I know none of us have ever been there. Have fun, not fussing. Yesterday I went over to Arby's. I was trying to get something for everybody, so I went over to Wendy's and I got a couple of hamburgers. I went on across the street. And, 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 uh, and I was talking with Linda, and, and I got the hamburgers, and I paid it in the drive through and I put it in the drive. I said, well, I almost drove off without my hamburgers. She said, don't do that. I'm inside. Well, I didn't. I won't. So I go over to Arby's, and I pay for those sliders, and I get to the house. And I reach up, and I see Wendy's bags. I don't see the Arby bags. I said, what? I said, you remember I told you I almost did it with Wendy's? She said, yeah, I said I did it at Arby's. She said, what? I said, I paid for four sliders and they're still there. She said, what you going to do? I said, they should have been, look, they should have been a little faster. If they were faster, I would have had them right there ready for me. When I paid them, I wouldn't have had to worry about this. She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, what you going to do? I said, I'm going to show them. I'm going to go pick them up. I was playing. So when I went, I went there, I said, can I get my sliders? And they said, we ain't even made them yet. So I got my sliders and I came back. She said, What happened? I said, I showed them. I went back and picked them up. Really? She laughed, laughed, laughed. Say, say, say again. We get pity, we get pitiful, then we get pouty, then we get pushy. Well, what did Paul Silas do? They could have done all those. You know what they did? They praised. When you can find a way to praise God in your worst, absolute worst times, You'll have a breakthrough. Not only will you have a breakthrough, the Bible says the prisoners were listening. They want to see how they would respond. There's people in your job waiting to hear how you're going to respond. There's, you know, I've had people all the time, I, I try to lead them to the Lord or whatever, and they don't want to hear it. And, and I talk to them about the Lord, and they just don't want to hear it. And I have them come up to me and go, and, and I'll have a bad day at a fountain or somewhere, and I'll say something wrong, and they'll come and say, Is that the way a Christian is supposed to sound? You mean you turn down everything else I said, but because I just said something you disagreed with, all of a sudden now I'm, I'm a bad Christian? People are listening. They want to hear what you're doing. So, 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 so here we go. Watch, watch, watch. As soon as they praised, the Bible says that God sent an earthquake and opened up all the doors. Amen? So watch this. I love this. Remember, I told you, remember that scripture, Psalm 98. Get ready. Here we go. And it came to pass on the seventh time when the, prison, when, the, when the priest blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. That word shout is the same exact word for make a joyful noise unto the Lord. The same exact word. When they turned to the city, which was their promise, and face the walls that were standing between them and God's promise, they made a joyful noise. They didn't just shout. They made a joyful noise. And when they made that joyful noise, God brought down the house. Amen? So, that's number five. Y'all looking, like looking like you want to be left alone. Okay, here we go. Number six. What does that say? He's got your six. He's got your back. You see, God brings protection. Psalm 71, David says, By thee have I been holding up from the womb ever since I was even created. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's womb. Uh, my praise shall be continually of thee. I am a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. 
Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. Just quickly. Oh, wrong way. Hit the wrong button. Did I ever do that? <laughs> I hope you don't ever do that at the Pentagon. Oh, we don't want to go to war. Okay. Oh, hit the wrong button. <laughs> David said God had protected him from had protected him from his mother's womb. And he said, because of that, I'm going to continue to praise God because I know he's got my back. When we praise God, watch this. We are protected from dangers we never know about. I, I used to say, well, you know what? If I'm still praising you, God, things still happen to me. How in the world are you protecting me? Do you realize how worse it could have been if you weren't praising God? Do you realize how bad it could have been if God hadn't stopped? Do you know how many times y'all could have already been dead? How many times you could have been blind? How many times you could have lost limbs? How many times all these things that you had that might have been a minor accident or maybe a major accident could have been a whole lot worse if you hadn't been if God hadn't been taking care of you? God's awesome. Here we go. Seven and eight are from the same thing. Get ready. Here comes number seven. Praise is an effective weapon against the devil. Two parts. Here's the first part. I love this. Hit the wrong button again. Praise God. Part one. Is it a praise that irritates the devil? I'm going to show you something. I was sitting there, I was thinking, Lord, that, I, I, that's got to be a two parter. I just can't be one thing that's happy to because I got uh, just feel the need to put Satan in there and also put God. And so, and here you watch this. When you start praising God, the first thing it does is it, it reminds him of his past. Do you know the Bible says he had these wonderful pipes? He was glorious. He had pipes. He was, he was the praise leader in heaven. He, had, he was awesome. That's why there's so much trouble in music today because Satan was the one that created, well, or the creator of music, but he was the orchestrator of music in heaven. God's the creator. But he was the orchestrator of music in heaven. And when he was kicked out of heaven, he lost that position. It reminds him of his presence. Present because when we praise, it invites God's power. He can't stand that. And it reminds him of his future. There's coming a day when we're going to stand in God's presence and praise him 24-7. And he's going to be baking in the lake. Wow. It just reminds him of his past, his future, his present, and his future. Watch this. Say, you want to irritate him? You really want to irritate him? You want to get at him because I know he gets with you. Amen. Here we go. He has hated praise ever since because it's a reminder of what he gave up and can't regain. It's over for Satan. He's going to bake in a lake. No matter how far you've gone today, it's not over for you. God has your back. So, remember, I just look, look. Praise shuts Satan down. Okay? None of this praise shall say, now this is part one, here's part two. Come on, baby. Let's go. There we go. For the battle's not... <laughs> There's a little boy in his dog. I'm going to put him cover. Say, man. For the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Go out and face him tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I'll find out get some people Bible. Because they say, I want to read this. This is so awesome. Get your Bibles out. Turn to 2 Chronicles. If you don't know where 2 Chronicles is, it's after 1 Chronicles. Second Chronicles. God is so good. All the time. 2 Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 20. That's what read a little bit. And then we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about this. Remember, this is number, this is number eight. Or actually part two of number seven, which is number eight. Amen. When we praise God, we invite him to do the battle for us. Second Chronicles chapter 20. And it came to pass after this that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon 
and with him other beside the Amalekites came unto Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria, and behold, they be in, in Hazazan uh, Tamar, which is in Gedai. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. In other words, he got serious because he saw how bad it was. And to gathered themselves together and asked help of the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, art thou not God of heaven? Rules thou not over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Art thou, are not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before the people, Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever? And thou dwell therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If an evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before thy house in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affection, then thou wilt hear and help. You notice what he's doing. The first thing he does is he sees this multitude against him. This multitude is way beyond him. It's so far beyond him, there's no way he can fight this battle. No way whatsoever. He cannot fight and or win this battle alone. <coughs> First thing he does is he goes to God. He gets serious. How long has it been since you got serious with God? He proclaimed the fast and all the people sought the Lord. Then he reminded God of his word. When you read God his word, his promises, what you're doing is that's what God wants. He wants us to remind him of his word. That's what he's held. Just remind him of his promises. And now all the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldst not let Israel obey when they would come out of the land of Egypt, but thou turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. Our possession, our family, our homes, our lands, our jobs. Satan's coming to take it away. If he can get his hold of it, he's going to take it away. O oh, our God, thou wilt not judge them, for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. These know that we, that we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all of you stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then, upon just as Riel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, the Levite, and of the sons of Asaph, came up the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, that thou, King Jehoshaphat, say the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor be dismayed by the reason of this great multitude. Here it goes. For the battle is not yours. But it's God's. Some of y'all in here are fighting God's battles versus letting God fight it for you. That's why you find yourself losing. You're trying to fight what God says He was going to fight for you. Why do I want? Why do I want to keep trying to fight something? You know, like yesterday, I was sitting in Lowe's. I'm sitting in Lowe's. It was it was crazy. I was in Lowe's because uh, I had an exhaust fan go out. So I'm in Lowe's trying to find a replacement exhaust fan. While I'm sitting there, in walks my, in walks Nick, my stepson. He walks in, and he walks by, and he has to see me out of the corner of his eye. And he goes, whoa! I said, hey. He said, hey. He said, I need you. I said, well, that's cool. I reckon I need you, too. <laughs> well, you couldn't have to get mushy right there in Lowe's. I don't know. And I said, well, what do you need? He said, I'm here with somebody. We're trying to wire a barn, and, and, and we need some help. And once I got over there and saw what he was doing, he definitely needed some help. Either that or a really good insurance policy. <laughs> and so I asked him a few questions, and I've asked him a few questions. I said, you know what the best thing to do is he said, what? I said, leave Lowe's right now, put the stuff down, leave Lowe's, send me pictures, and I'll tell you what to do. He said, okay, that sounds good to us. They so put everything down, and they left Lowe's. And I got some pictures in a few minutes. But again, here it is. They couldn't do this battle on their own. It was impossible. It's amazing that I went to Lowe's at the exact same time. Had no idea Nick was going to be there. Had no idea that he was going to be doing electrical. Had no idea what was going on with him. I was trying to get an exhaust fan in my bathroom. And so, that he happens to walk through. Actually, he walked through going to the bathroom. He says, I was way to the bathroom and I saw you. And so, so again, you see how God does it? He could not do it on his own. So God sent somebody that could. If we'll quit fighting the battle. And give it to God. It's amazing what will happen. God will send the right person at the right time to take 
care of business. Amen? So, so, so just like yesterday, I got a call. I get a call, uh, and, 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 and one of my daughter-in-laws, there they were, they had a flat tire, they couldn't get a hold of her husband. They said, can you please come help? I'm trying to help. And as I'm trying to help, they got a little rinky dick, rinky dick, uh, uh, Jack. Jack. The Jack was, thank you. The Jack was falling over like this. I saw it over to the side a little bit. I said, it's the only thing I got to use. So I cranked it up, I took the tire off, and I was trying to get the tire down off the, off the back of the chair away so that the right there makes it up. I couldn't get the spare tire down. I'm trying to get it, so I hope they're looking. And all of a sudden, one of my friends drives by that doesn't even live. He lives, he lives 30 miles away. 30 miles away. He stopped by because his daughter needed him to go check on a house that she was thinking about buying. So he drives 30 miles over to check on his house. And while he's there, he sees me. He pulls up and he says, he says, dude, that jack's getting ready to fall. I didn't know that the thing had even started getting worse. I was under the van. And so he pulls up and he had a Chevrolet, so he kept saying sympathy for me. He pulls out his jack, he jacks it up, and then he tells me exactly where I go to let down the let down the spare tires. We let down the spare, and he helped me fix it. And I told him, I said, You're my angel. He said, Do I look like an angel? I said, well, You're an angel with a wide part. <laughs> his wings were on his side. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> his wife said, his, his wife said, I said, God sent you here today. God sent you. You protected me. You kept me from doing something stupid. And, and, and of course, it was really funny because she said, well, we, we weren't supposed to be here. We just decided to come through to see if my daughter wants to check. So we decided to come through at this time. At this time. I'm under the van. God sent us 30 miles, and we come by at this time. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it hit my head, I've been all right. All right. So, so again, here's how God does it. I couldn't fight that battle on my own, so God sent somebody to help take care of it. So, so, so here it is. Watch this. So, tomorrow, go you down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zeus, and you shall find them at the end of the brook with a, before the wilderness of Jewel. Watch this. Here it is. Some of y'all need to hear this. You get, I hope I'm not reading all this. Somebody needs to hear this now. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Wait a minute. There's three major nations coming against my little bitty kingdom. Three major nations coming against my little bitty kingdom. And they're trying to tear me apart. And you're telling me I don't need to fight? Watch this. You don't need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Jude, Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not. Nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites uh, uh, of the children of the, the Kohites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord before God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Watch this. I'm just going to skip down a little bit. Uh, well, I was going to read it all. <coughs> and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Jerusalem, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, that they should praise the, be praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and said, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. And when they were coming against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, others to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped destroy one another. Can you see this? God's people, and this praise, this word praise you the Lord was Yahweh praise. So they're walking down, they're walking, saying, Praise you the Lord for his mercy and earth forever. Yahweh praise, their hands are raised. They think people are surrendering. And they are surrendering, surrendering to God. And as they come down like this, they say, Praise you, Lord, for your mercy endures forever. All of a sudden, God mingles upon these people and they start fighting each other. And they kill each other. God's people got to do nothing but just stand there. 
Praise the Lord for His mercy and deserves forever. You know what mercy is? Deserving bad stuff, but God giving you good. I mean, here deserves some bad stuff. And God's going to give you good. So, so, so again, watch this. Watch this. I love it. When we praise, it moves God out front, it makes Him big, and it moves us out of His way. When we praise God, it moves God out front, <coughs> makes Him big, and moves us out of God's way. Again, there it was. They, 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 they began to sing and to praise. The Lord said in ambushments, God took care of the battle for them. This morning, how many remember the uh, uh, mighty army this morning? Mighty army this morning. Here it is. I put it there. Mighty army. I, I wanted to put sometimes you have to, but I didn't have enough room. So I just made it short, sweet, simple. Mighty army. Hit up. Stay strong. Smile by faith. Move forward. That's what they did. Hit up. I had like on my head now. I'm a child of God. Hold you hit up. Stay strong. I might be, you might not think I'm strong, but God knows my strength. Stay strong. Sometimes it takes everything within me to smile. But I was looking at my mom on her deathbed. She would need to see me smile at her. And saying, tell me something, son. Which meant to joke with me. Cut up with me. She loved me to cut up with her. She said, talk to me, son. Talk to me. Which meant be strong. I'll be strong with me. But smile. Say so something funny. And I look at her and inside I wanted to cry. But on the outside, I, 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 I didn't even... You know, whatever. I, I give her old jokes. It didn't matter. I just do something. And she would, she would smile. And I'd smile with her. And I'd turn my head like a tear. And just keep on looking at her smiling. And keep on saying things. I was at the hospital the other day talking with somebody. And, and, and of course, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, uh, I don't know how bad things were. And the more I saw what was going on, the worse it got. And it hurt me so bad. But to them, I just smiled and said, God's got this. God's got it. And I walked out. I was washing my hands and I was walking out to the hospital and I said, oh God, I'm, thank you God that you're so powerful that we can trust you in the middle of all this. We don't have to give in to despair because Lord, if I had to go through this, I can tell you I would not be a happy camper right now. Thank you God. Thank you. Going to prison on uh, uh, Thursdays, that, 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 they kind of changed my roles around and so now uh, uh, while I do counseling, also they have special books that people ask for. And I, I'll go through and I'll give them these special books. But what I do is I don't just go into D Block and just give this one guy his stuff. I fill up a cart. And when I go into D Block, I give everybody something. Because those guys, they're in there. They don't want to see you give a book to one guy and nobody else gets one. So I get some to everybody. I go into F Block. And instead of just giving that one book out, I finally went into F Block. And the guy said, I walked up to F Block and I had this big old cart full of, full of stuff. Especially brand new daily breads. And the guard looked at me and said, Man, that's quick. I said, What do you mean? He said, The other guy said he was praying for God to send him a fresh daily bread. <laughs> so I walked in and said, Here they are, fresh out of the oven. <laughs> and they said, Man, that was a fast answer to prayer. I said, There's two people you can thank for this. They're thanking me. I said, Oh, thank you. There's two people you can thank for it. They said, Who? I said, Thank God, number one. And number two, thank 217 of them. Because I was coming back here to give him a book that he asked for. And all y'all got blessed because of it. I said, if y'all got an extra bubble gum or whatever, you need to get it at 217. They said, we will. I said, I will. <coughs> God. God. is watching. Get up. Don't say with me. Get up. Get up. Stay strong. Stay strong. Smile by faith. Smile by faith. Move forward. Move forward. One more time. Get up. Stay strong. Smile by faith. Move forward. Wow. Here's what happens. Look. DC, come on up, everybody. God is magnificent. He can never be praised enough. There are no bounties or boundaries to his greatness. Psalm 145 and 3. God is magnificent. God is magnificent. He can never be praised enough. There are no boundaries to his greatness. Wow. God is awesome. God is awesome. We're in the short rows now, church. We're very much in the short rows. Has there ever been a time to get serious with God? It's now. Has there ever been a time to get on the move with God? It's now. 
Has there ever been a time to be serious with God? It's now. I sit back and I keep hearing that man sitting next to me on that plane. Built this magnificent facility. It was gorgeous. It looked like it was twice the size of this church. Magnificent. And so I'm going back. I'm finishing up some of the, some of the rooms. And I'm giving the keys to them. He said, I don't want to hear it anymore. He said, so I'm tired of trying. I quit. <clears throat> that has awakened me out of sleep a couple of times. That big, beautiful church that he says is empty. Not only of people, but of God's presence. He said, I just want out. I'll build it and I'm leaving. I just want out. Wow.
I'll say this all night. Uh, Jesus will number our days. What I talking about is, is know that we ain't got so much time. Some of us got more time than others. Nobody really knows what day you're going to cease to be here and be before God. But just know that it's coming that day. And so it's good to go ahead now. Get serious with God. Take care of business. Amen. Get serious with God. Take care of business. Tuesday nights, uh, we're going to talk about it. You say, well, I don't know what God wants me to do. Come Tuesday night, we'll find out. Amen. We're going to talk about how God, that's what we're going to talk about, is it, our purpose in God. Come on. God's got something for you. Somebody say, God's got it. God's got it. You got to take it. got to take it. Amen. Amen. You know, and I can remember one day when I was sitting at the table, and I was trying to be polite, and the lady said, would you like this last pork chop? I was trying to be polite, and I said, nah, my belly was gurgling, and that pork chop looked good. She was such a good cook. She said, would you like some pork chop, Pastor? I said, no. I'm trying to be polite. She says, you sure? I said, I'm positive. She said, absolutely sure. I said, I'm absolutely positive. She said, okay, here, Father. He took it. If I know she would give it a title, I'd have took it. Well, God's hand you stuff. Take it. It's here. Take it. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Dog. That's right. That's right. The yeah, dog got the pork chop. Amen. Uh, it got good. All the time. Brother Frank's been super at play. 